Ah, yes, now we are live. Uh, you may please start. Fine. Uh, dear friends, welcome to the Breakthrough Science Society's webinar today on the evolution of geographical maps. Nanbarhale, Breakthrough Science Society Lodaya, Indraya Malay, Karutaraktaivu, Geographical Maps. Aude Bhuvi in Varai Padangal, Yavar Tondrina, Murkalatil Adi Yavar, Mudal Mudalil Varaya Patana, Tarpo the Adurudaya, Tori Rutpa Nila Yenna. Either Galatil in the maps alam Yapudi Yirkum Yandra or Warlat Pokai Namadeye Editori Padakaha Gita Kartike in our head, Namadeya in your kindra head. Perasir Gita Kartikeyan, our head, Sumar Mupodan de Halamaha in the Geography Troile, Sene Palkale Karakam, Matrum Sene in Rudea, Queen Mary's Kaluri in Rudea, Geography Tore Talevaraha, Paniatu in Rahe. Our head, Perasir Matumala in the Turele Pala Ayu Kature Hale, Palvere Sarvedes a Karutarangalil Panku Petri. In the Troile, we have Bukia Pangalipe Valangirkara. Vermane geography and Rau Turail, Pera Asiria, Padipe Solikuruka Kuri or Asiria and Rene Lir the Mari Mudubayaha and the Turail Rudea Valarchikaha and a Yerbutu Kondavar, Pera Asiria Gita Kartika. So our Lamade in Redinum in the Karita Karitaiway, Palanguadil, now Perime Arikindro. Dear friends, Professor Gita Kartikeyan, she has been working about 30 years in Madras University under Madras University Queen Mary's College. You know about QMC, such a, uh, a famous institute in South India. She has been from the beginning in this field of geography, teaching, not only teaching, she has done a lot of research works, participated in many international conferences, going to many other countries as well. And she has been a dynamic person in the institute to promote this geography to such a level where most of the students who complete the degree, they are placed. And she is also very active in a geographical teachers association in Tamil Nadu. Everybody knows her in Tamil Nadu in different universities and institutes. So this way, she is a very dynamic professor and uh, there's a lot of difficulties she has been able to come to us and presenting this particular topic. It's a topic of very much interest to all of us, how the map has been made, because we know that the people thought the earth was flat. And then they had to realize that it is a sphere. And what type of sphere, where is the land, where is the water, and so many things. So from there, what was man's first conception of a map on earth? So that's a very interesting story. And she will be giving us the story of how the maps evolve and what is the present technology today. We know we are using GPS, GMS, and all those things. What will be the future course of development? So now I welcome Professor Geeta Kartikeyan to deliver his talk. Can I go ahead, sir? Yeah, please. Yeah. A very good evening to one and all present here. Professor Dr. Geet, you may please, uh, you may begin, please. Uh, it gives me a great pleasure about uh, being one of the speakers in the series of evolution. I know you all had uh, various presentations on evolution of Earth, evolution of universe, evolution of life, and also again, uh, the extinction of life and all those had been taken uh, in the series. So far, and uh, you must all be wondering why this evolution of geographical maps have come into being, right? So here, I would like to tell that the evolution of movement of humankind would have happened because of the creation and the existence of map. So that is why I brought this evolution of geographical maps into this series of evolution. 
Well, my presentation is going to be uh, uh, three phases where past, I would be dealing with the past of map, present and the future of maps. So before going to this, we should know what is a map, right? So map is the word map had come from the medieval Latin mapa mundi, where mapa means napkin or the cloth, and mundi means the word. Thus, map became the short-term term referring to a two-dimensional representation of the Earth's surface, uh, where um, the map is a representation of uh, draw representation or drawing of the map Earth surface, or a part of area is drawn on a flat surface. So that is called a map. So these maps were made in different forms uh, since the ancient times. Okay. And uh, the maps were always like these days maps are made according to a scale. So scale here, I mean here as 1 is to 50,000, 1 is to 75,000. What is this 1 is to 50,000? and small scale. Yeah, very good, very good. <laughs> I'm very happy. <laughs> yeah, large scale, small scale, and all these are there. This 1 is to 50,000, what is the meaning of this representation? It's usually made in uh, representative. Uh, uh, yeah, so many people well knowledge about that. Very, I'm very happy yeah, about that. Uh, I think you can put your mic mute, unmute. No, no. Please put your hello. I think these students. Have... Hello, can I proceed? Hello? Yes, yes, please proceed. Ah, yes. Uh, so this one is to fifty thousand means one unit on the map represents fifty units on the ground. That's what I mean as one is to fifty thousand, one is to seventy five thousand, and these are all the different scales where. Uh, uh, people used to uh, do the maps and maps, maps, scaling, scaled maps are very important as they are very important because uh, when maps are not to be scaled, you can see in a big map, if there are, there is a small note map not to be scaled means the map is not scaled with proper uh, scientific way of projections and all those are not applied. So nowadays, map scaled maps are very useful and highly scientific, and that can be used for any processes in uh, uh, the further map making and things like that. Okay, before going to that, I will uh, uh, let me not go in depth about that. Uh, like, what is cartography? We need to know what is cartography. When we are talking about map, we need to know what is cartography too, right? So cartography is nothing but a science or a study of science or art making of maps is called cartography. Cartography is the method through which maps are studied, created, designed. It's a confluence of practice and science, art, where cartography guides the principles and practical standards behind maps and map making. So the, with the overlap between geography, over, earth sciences, Topology, even politics, cartography is highly intersectional discipline. With all these, again, with one centering idea, location. So again, there comes the role of geographers, right? So with this, cartography helps us to understand our place in job world, analyzes the positional relationship, and reflects on geograph geography's effect on our daily lives. So this is what is cartography. I wanted to tell what is cartography because we are studying about the maps, right? So cartography is nothing but the science and art of map making. Well, so here I have made milestones in map making. So which, I mean, uh, these um, phases, I have made uh, five uh, different milestones of map making where the first phase is art of uh, first maps were manually constructed with brushes and parchments. There, it uh, I mean, it varied with quality, but here again, these were made in very few quantities. 
because they were not we were not able to preserve all these they would uh, bone out i mean they would uh, the moisture content would stick uh, and so the quantities were minimized in these and uh, the chemicals and all were not found then so the second phase with the help of the tools of map making uh, the accuracy of making maps had developed so what are all the different tools with which they found were compass printing press telescopes sextant and vernier allowed for the creation of far more accurate uh, maps and this is this was the second stage the third stage was the chemical advancements where uh, the chemicals like uh, like one second um, the photochemical technology uh, such as uh, lithographic and photochemical process had, uh, had allowed the uh, map making process in where they could uh, preserve the where they could preserve the maps in a better way, where uh, uh, the wear and tear of the maps and the moisture content resistant and all that uh, helped. These photochemical chemicals had helped in preserving the maps. So we could, uh, as the printing press had come, they, were made, they made many more maps uh, to uh, store it and things. And these photochemicals had helped in storing the maps. So the quantities of making map had increased. So the fourth advancement in map electronic advancements. Here in electronic advancement, this had taken place somewhere in the mid late 20th century, where the electronic technology had further made a great revolution in map making. Uh, and this had led to the computer advancements where computer hardware such as uh, printers, screener, screen plot plotters, and scanners, digitizer, analytical stereo plotters, all these had helped in visualization and image processing and spatial analysis in a better manner. So this is how uh, it had taken place. Uh, these were all the different milestones the maps, map making process had undergone. So let us now first go into the past of maps. The past of maps uh, deals with the origin of maps, exploring, storing, abstracting, and scaling using lines and icons. See, you, we, we know that in ages like um, uh, uh, way before map had been used for various purposes, man had started to move. He started to look beyond his boundary only with the use of these maps. So since then, the 4th uh, uh, BC, uh, we had since 4 BC, we had uh, the use of maps and the different ways of maps had been done. So first you could see that the Babylonians had made clay tablets where uh, they made uh, the map impression on the clay tablets and that, that's how it was used. And this clay tablets is still preserved and it is kept in the museum. Uh, which I, I mean, I should show the image uh, later on in my presentation. And again, the Egyptians uh, made map use for uh, maintaining their uh, record property boundaries. So that's how they all used the maps. The Egyptians used maps that way. And these Chinese had used, uh, I mean, had made maps on silk. So the delicate skills over the silk, they drew the map and they uh, preserve the maps that way. So each had made maps on their own availability of materials and resources and preserved it. And this is how the um, process of uh, uh, making maps had been taking place. And during the process of making maps, scaling had come into being. And again, the latitudes, longitude, the projections and all had come into being with various inventions of the tools. Okay. Uh, with the telescopes and compass and all those direction had played a very important role. And, and again, the flattening of Earth uh, using the latitude, longitude, you can see in the thing that uh, the Earth was a flat feature. Again, that's how people were imagining that the Earth was a flat feature. But after the invention of various tools and exploring the uh, exploring their boundary even further, they found that no, the earth is spherical. And that's how the latitudes, longitudes, and the coordinate systems and all had arised. The role of Greece, Egyptians, and uh, 
So this is how uh, uh, the evolution, the past of maps had been uh, in the process of uh, making. So the history of cartography, here I would tell that um, um, uh, cartography or the map making, as I told you before, has been uh, an integral part of human history for a long time, possibly around 8,000 years. That's what I told you before. When, when and how the earliest maps were made is unclear, but maps of local terrains are believed to have been independently invented by, by many cultures. The earliest surviving maps include cave paintings and etching of tusk and the stone, and maps were produced extensively by the Babylons, Greece, Rome, China, and India, of course, yes. India had also played a very uh, a great role in uh, uh, making of maps. Yes, and the next slide. Yes, and this was the one which I was talking about. This is the oldest tablet of uh, map, which the clay tablet where the Babylons had made. And this is still preserved and kept in museums where you can uh, go and visit and see the uh, tablet and get fascinated and see how people had used the maps in those days. And look at the interest they have shown to preserve this tablet, which is still existing in our uh, this era also. So you must have seen how much of uh, effort they would have taken to make these tablets, clay tablets, which is still good in condition rather. More than the paper form, the tablet is still kept in a very good manner. Well, uh, before, I mean, we should also know who are all the uh, cartographers and geographers who played a major role in map making. So the first person whom I'm going to talk about is the Anaximander. Anaximander was the first ancient Greek to draw the map of the known world. And he is considered to be the first cartographer, okay? And the next person, and you can see the map which I have shown you below, Europe, Libya, and Asia. This was the area which they knew and they made a spirit, I mean, a, 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 they drew a circle and this, these are the continents found and they could see the ocean on the either side. So they put the ocean on the either side. And this is how the uh, uh, map of Anaximander had uh, been first. I mean, he uh, did the first map and this was the first map which is made by Anaximander who is the first cartographer. Then Aristos he is the father of geographer. He used uh, these earth partitions to reference places on the map. I mean, whatever Anaximander used, he used it as the reference places of the map. And he was the first person to use the word geography. And that's why I brought uh, his picture into this uh, famous cartographers. And again, uh, it is the Gladius Ptolemy. Um, he is the uh, man, I mean, he, he had mapped very accurately because he is also a mathematician who applied scale projection and all those and he made the map more accurate and uh, using projection he made the map and you can see the map which i've given here uh, that is the map produced by ptolemy and the next person is Mar marketa and yes all of you know that uh, i hope the slide is visible is it visible the full, yes, yes, the full slide, yes. Um, Mercator is known as the father of modern geographer, modern cartography, I'm sorry. And he is the most, uh, his invention, innovation was the most important innovation. As still we use um, Mercator projection, where when we want the, uh, the whole of the, con I mean, whole of the earth or the continents to be represented flat, then we use Mercator projection. And based on the need, the projections vary, like conical projection, uh, bonds projection. It varies based on the uh, uh, representation or the viewing of the continents. We can, uh, we can use the projections. 
So Mercator projection is uh, even now is being used so widely and with such accuracy it is being made. So we should really be thankful that Mercator had made such map. And you can also see the map of Mercator, a flat surface where all the continents have been represented. Well, the next slide. And the past cartographic tools include the compasses, which I told you, and the mylar sheeting, planimeters, dividers, on all of which are used to create the analog maps. Now the digital mapping has come and made it more popular and modern cartographic tools have been changed significantly. Initially, to make these maps, the topographical maps, topographical maps were made using the uh, survey instruments like chain, um, plane table survey and the prismatic compass and the clinometers. These were all the various survey instruments. Using these survey instruments, these topographical maps were made. And these topographical sheets were made with so much of uh, uh, hard work with such accuracy, even now, if you want to see uh, a, a unit on the map shows the accurate uh, thing on the ground, uh, of the ground, whichever area which you select, okay? So uh, with all these technologies, the topographical uh, maps had uh, slowly uh, took over and uh, the aerial photographs had come into being because uh, topographical sheets had uh, a wider area. When I want to do a research on a smaller area, the, these topographical sheets, I need to use many topographical sheets to uh, bring my, my small area to assess or analyze. So then came into being the aerial photographs, the present map map. There, I will tell you about how the aerial photographs had come into being. So whatever the disadvantages we had using the survey instruments and the topographical sheet with slight technological improvement, the aerial photographs had come into being. So they had played a very important role in uh, making the real world. They had, I mean, the aerial photograph is nothing but you'll have to go, I mean, uh, flights were sent above the um, earth surface where they used to have these sensors and the photographs were taken. The photographs were taken. Initially, the photographs were all taken in, uh, yeah, for, before going to aerial photographs, I'll tell you what, what are all the presence of maps. Uh, it is the transit maps elongating, straightening lines and cognitive maps are the present maps. The 20th century, whatever the, is happening was happened in the 20th century, are all under the presence of present of maps, the present stage of maps. Uh, so this, the analogical map making had a breakthrough where uh, today uh, uh, the, uh, what do you say, uh, the diagrammatic appearance of the map had such drastic changes with all the digitizing of map web, computer mapping, layering techniques, spatial analysis, all these had come into being in the 20th century where computers and hardware had played a major role in making more accurate maps uh, where we used, uh, I mean, the manual map making and all had taken a transformation and the computers or the hardware took over to make the maps. So that had a great breakthrough in map making. So, and uh, this, these were the things which I was thinking and uh, the modern, Tools of cartographies are the aerial photographs, sensors, GPS, GNNS, and the satellites and GIS. So I would tell you what are all today's cartography, all these um, uh, tools had really made map making more accurate and more useful for the users who are using at the user end. So what is aerial photographs we shall see? You can see the difference of the previous aerial photograph, which was taken all in black and white. When, the, when we had found the cameras in black and white, the photographs were black and white. And uh, again, after um, the technological improvements, the color photographs had taken place with the color, color cameras, color sensors. And again, you can see the accuracy of uh, the maps from a wider area and again a smaller area and more accurately you can see the houses as such. Initially the houses were shown in small small dots and the houses were very well 
seen. So these are all the improvements taken place uh, in the process, I mean, in the cartography process, uh, aerial photography process. Um, but again, aerial photographs also had some disadvantages where we had the overlapping and all those. So again, um, there was an again technological uh, improvement about why not take uh, even more, uh, uh, I, mean, uh, high, I mean, take a picture with a little more high, higher altitude. So then came the satellite uh, imagery and satellite imagery. Uh, so this is what I was talking about. Uh, satellites were sent for various purposes and satellite imagery again uh, that also had uh, various process like it first initially it had the um, infrared first black and white then infrared then again uh, it uh, now the false color and again now it's the true color images are also coming up now so you are mm -hmm. also we are able to get the true color images satellite imagery is also these days with all the technological improvements we are getting it so the google earth and all has been uh, playing a major role in map making in the recent times um, uh, like um, yes based on your uses you can uh, uh, take the satellite imagery for instance if it is for forestry if it is for agricultural for regional planning based on that you can uh, take the uh, satellite imagery and uh, the resolutions are also working out based on the requirements okay and now it's the global positioning system uh, what is gnns and global positioning system uh, what is gnns gnns is nothing but the uh, global navigational um, satellite systems so these, this global positioning system, GPS is one among the GNNS, where global positioning system has played a major role in accurate, I mean, everybody now, if at all, we are going somewhere, if we don't know the tech location, we immediately take our mobiles and uh, I mean, share, I mean, uh, type the location and we ask the Google map to take us to that place. This is all working on under the concept of global positioning system. So everybody are in need, everybody, layman is also using a map to find out where he's going. So you must, I, I, I'm sorry to say layman, here the uh, uh, Ola driver, Ola car, and all those people are all using. If at all he's coming from another state, or another uh, district, he's using, I mean, he's new to Chennai. So he'll be using the mobile uh, phone for uh, locating where he's going. If the customer is telling that go to Virgambakam, he's typing there Virgambakam and he takes the clients or the customers to that particular place. So here the global positioning is playing an important role for him to guide uh, him to take the right location and right way to go to reach the destination. And GIS, yeah, GIS is another sea change or the uh, catastrophic change which has been brought into map making. GIS is again a tool and under GIS, there are various softwares uh, um, created uh, like uh, ArcInfo, MapInfo, Arc, uh, 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 I mean, all these MapInfo, ArcInfo and all were used before uh, where we had uh, um, uh, a desktop, a box type desktop. There we had the DOS command, and there we used this map info, arc info, arc info, and all. Then there was slowly development in the GIS tool. I um, mean, uh, with uh, various uh, inputs in the um, software developments and uh, programming and all. And now arc info, I mean, ArcGIS has come. ArcGIS is the latest uh, software with various versions. Like it started with three and now it's gone beyond 10, 11, 12 and all. It's again a user-friendly um, software where it is used for uh, making map in a more accurate map. But initially uh, when we had this uh, desktop or uh, it was fixed with a, a digitized uh, table and we used to manually digitize the uh, places whichever we want for our research work but then again that was called a digitizer board and this digitizer plotter and all these had slowly taken over uh, with the GIS uh, software updation 
where uh, we could do on screen digitizing on the screen itself we can digitize whichever place we want based on our research uh, need so all these were the various uh, uh, sea changes which had taken place uh, in the gs uh, geographic information systems and it is actually developing uh, i mean we are all working under uh, all these for just to make an accurate map and cater to the needs of the user. That's the main idea about developing the softwares with uh, various programming and other things. And again, uh, what are all the different advancements in spatial data? See, you, you can see that uh, the first picture was the black and white picture, the first photo from space, which was taken in 1959. The US Satellite Explorer uh, 6 had taken this photograph. And you can see the latest picture, the latest satellite picture, which, um, which has the color in it. And you can see the ocean parts. And you can see the land surface. And you can also see the snow cover and all those in such clear manner, uh, where uh, it can be, uh, I mean, uh, through Google Earth, Zoom, uh, Earth, Sentinel Hub, various other new technologies. Um, these are all the new softwares which help in seeing us the earth in a more clear and the accurate manner. The real picture of earth can be seen through these uh, resources. So these are all the developments and uh, which has led to the future of maps. In future of maps, what is this future of maps? Here, it is more of systemization uh, where uh, automa automation uh, of maps and systemization, real-time data, indoor navigation systems have all come into being. Uh, here, uh, what I mean here is uh, the, the data. I mean, now there is a data explosion happening in this world where we need to really manage the data. The database management has become so challenging that we need to... Um, uh, compete and keep the challenges where we can also restore the data and bring or use the data and bring out uh, the need uh, of the user. So the data explosion had uh, brought the change in the uh, future of maps where we need to systemization, optimization, and all that take place. Where GIS and uh, GIS had played a very important role in uh, maintaining this, this Google, Apple, NVIDA, all these uh, enterprises had really helped in uh, storing these data and working at the data. And um, actually, um, now the future of maps is uh, like how we how it is done. Like we initially, we used to see the bus traveling on the road. This, this was viewed. This was the present era of map making. But in the future era of map making, we can see how many passengers are there in the bus we can see. The, these are all the new updation which has been taking place. And I don't know, it, it, it might even go into a depth of uh, seeing how many uh, ladies and men are sitting at the seats and how many seats are occupied, how many seats are not occupied. All these data are uh, so manipulated and these automation has got a real change and it's really working out uh, in making um, uh, visualization more accurate and the 3D geospatial data has really made uh, things in a very um, um, beautiful manner we are able to see the earth uh, feature i mean we can literally visualize the earth in a 3d model we can we need not go there all these virtual uh, videos and all are uh, taking play i mean all these are working on that virtual reality vr and all those are working on the space only. and the big challenge the bigger challenge that map makers are having for the future is to deal with the bigger that's what i was talking about uh, in the previous thing, where we need to really uh, um, control and manage the data which we are collecting. So cartography has become a universal uh, um, uh, collective information source. And from simple drawing to a canvas for discoveries of new world to a complex information is the uh, thing taking place in the future of the map making. Well, uh, so these are all the different things uh, 
um, uh, in the modern uh, times where the Google Earth, uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm not able to show the Google Earth or the animation. Uh, we can literally rotate the earth and see which place you are in and where your house is located. You can also see in this Google Earth. Only when you look, I mean, uh, enter your location, lat long, latitude and longitude in a correct manner, you can you, you will be taken to your house and you can be seeing viewing your house, the street of your house, the door steps of your house, everything can be visualized. All these are the geospatial technology, really breaking, bringing a breakthrough in all these. And again, Phantom 3 drone, this is again making a I mean, uh, the aerial photograph, satellite imagery, all these are, I mean, uh, taken over by these 3D drones. I mean, there are places where we really cannot reach. Uh, supposing if it is a forest area or a mountainous area, but I need to do my research on these areas means I can use these 3D drone where I can send, I can program the drone and send it across and get the information, whatever is available on the forest cover. I mean, these four, I mean, um, these 3D drones are all helpful in various other uses, apart from map making, like forest fires, what are the reasons for forest fires, various other things. I, I don't want to go into those details. These drones are also helpful. They are also giving a big sea change in map making process. And again, the sensors. Sensors are also um, very useful these days. Um, uh, sensors uh, like, um, uh, since uh, seismometers, lidar, sonar, all these are the different examples of sensors which can detect events, changes, physical characteristics of any given area with these stimuli, trans uh, transforming stimuli like sound, light, heat, or the motion. These would give the electronic uh, electrical signals, and that would be collect, I mean, uh, collected by the sensors and given to us. I mean, uh, these seismometers, you all very well know that. It's again, uh, these sensors are placed on the oceans and various places where you find the earthquakes occur occurring frequently. So these uh, seismometer sensors would detect the waves and alert us and uh, alert us about the earthquake occurrence or the coming up of the earthquake. And this would uh, lead the people to take care or um, uh, would help the government to alert the people living around the earth earthquake prone areas and we can do the needful for them. And again, the LIDARs are the methods for determining the ranges of ranges by targeting any object or surface with a, a laser. And this would, uh, this would, this is also helping uh, people in uh, again, detecting whether any uh, changes are taking place or anything like that. And sonar uh, is, that is one, it emits so, uh, sonic signal that will also reflect back when it comes um, and in contact with earth. And th these are all the examples of sensors. I don't want to go too deep into these sensors. Um, it will become very scientific. And these are all the tools which help in map making, that's what. And these UA, UAV, uh, UAV is unmanned aerial vehicle. These are also helping in map making process in more accurate way, uh, where it is uh, giving the precision of uh, collecting data from the ground sensors. And it is, uh, these are all the new developments which are uh, taking place in the map making processes. Uh, these are all helpful in various, uh, as I mentioned here, it helps in spraying this uh, pesticides, disease uh, detection, irrigation scheduling, weeding detection, and all those which is uh, written here. And uh, the next one is the AI and ML, the artificial intelligence and the machine learning. This is also playing a major role in map making processes. Uh, because AI and ML has been uh, a part of all the uh, all the pro work, all the scientific uh, um, inventions and discoveries. Uh, so AI and ML has also got a role or a part in map making too. So without these uh, 
many computers we cannot like uh, apart from the mobile applications these uh, mis and uh, uh, ais help in uh, um, our uh, day to day to day process of our uh, need for maps right? and the advanced geospatial technologies are uh, uh, the uni maps they, this is the latest technology for uh, faster data processing using the ai models which i was talking about it is now possible to process more sensor data and that is what uh, is the latest uh, advancement in uh, uh, spatial data uh, geospatial data just a second Uh, these uni maps uh, uh, are uh, the sources that even before an extract map features in both 2D and the 3D maps uh, uh, in uh, in a quicker manner we can get it. And again, the Google uh, map or the Google uses uh, the satellite imagery, aerial photographs, street maps, all in a panoramic uh, view you can get. that's what I, I had told you before if you have this google earth you can go visualize you just have to uh, have the internet connection that's it with that you can see you can view your earth i mean your uh, house your street of your house your whole uh, i mean uh, uh, opening of the door yes still your door uh, step you can see you can't go into the home, home at all as you know the global positioning cannot get to you so only the panoramic view of the streets and these uh, viewing can be done with the google earth uh, that's what i meant here about uh, the combination of satellite imagery aerial photographs and all those helps in uh, viewing your home and uh, again yeah map making processes so with this, uh, I would like to conclude uh, that uh, building a map uh, is a complex and keeping it up to date is even more challenging. And think about how often your city or your town or your neighborhood changes on a day-to-day -day basis. And businesses and shops open and close, stretches of highway are added, roadways are changing. So all these processes are taking place in, I mean, uh, I mean, one shop would be there that evening. The next day, the shop is not there. So you you, you keep on having changes in your streets and your uh, neighborhoods and things like that. All these have to be really kept. And uh, if you need to really update your map, your area, you, you need to use these maps. Today's map, in today's map, um, we need to divide two ways. Google Maps uses uh, advancements in AI and imagery to help you see the latest information about the world around you for every single day. So with this, uh, I would like to conclude. Uh, I hope it was interesting and uh, useful. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Professor Geeta. It was a very informative update information about this cartography. Now I request the audience, if you've got any questions, please ask, unmute and ask your questions. Uh, host may permit them to unmute. Yeah, yeah please. Yeah, permit Somebody has raised the hand. You may ask your question by unmuting your mic and video. you may probably unsh unshare your screen okay sir stop sharing stop sharing huh? yeah stop, stop sharing, sharing. <clears throat> yes now a participant can ask questions hello Yes. Yeah. Okay, so yes, so my doubt is so the marketer made the marketer a method of making the maps. Making the maps. It, no, no, no. Marketer had used the projection. I mean, he was the person who used the projection on a flat surface 
where we can bring the accuracy of map can be made with the projection. Mercator's projection, have you seen Mercator's projection? Yes. There are different types of projections like conical, bonds projection, um, Mercator projection, various other zenithal projection. There are various projections among which Mercator's projection has a flat way of representing the whole of the world. I mean, I mean to say here, whole of the earth means on a flat surface, all the continents can be displayed. So that was the projection which was used to represent the continents. Uh, what yes. is your question, please? What is your question? Yes, so while making this uh, map, while making this map using this method, some uh, countries are like, are like stretched and expanded. So if we view the map, like we we won't get the exact uh, exact uh, what shape of the map. Ah. Uh, which country? I mean, which country are you talking about? So you know? like. Uh, so, like, there is a difference between Africa and, and Greenland. Like, oh. uh, like it says Africa and Greenland are like, like they they both are like equal, but actually, Greenland is much smaller than Africa. <laughs> okay, that's uh, actually a very good thing which you have no, told. No, uh, uh, man, what he, uh, in addition, you have to tell what is meant by projection. Oh, okay. You want First to know? All, it is a spear. No, Earth is a spear. You want to bring the land and water distribution, which is on the sphere, onto a paper in a two-dimensional form. So this a process of projection bringing is bringing all the information, which is on a spherical ball, onto a two-dimensional paper or a sheet. Mm -hmm. Is not easy, you know, just like an orange. You want you if you you peel the orange. Uh, so now you understood the projection means that doing that, whatever you ask is a very interesting question. The Greenland and Africa should be similar. If the size is also similar, you cannot make a difference. So I think in that context, madam, you can explain now. Uh, yeah. Madam, madam, he is a seventh class kid. Okay, you can explain. Yeah, yeah, understood. So understood. Now you have to project your knowledge to a seventh class kid. <laughs> okay. See, actually, projection. I mean, as sir told, if it is an orange, when you want to bring the orange to a flat surface, you need to have the coordinates. The coordinates consist of what? May can you tell me if you have anything, any idea about it? Latitudes and the longitudes, right? You yeah. Know that. Yeah, you know that, right? The latitudes and the longitudes. That is uh, a network of the coordinates, right? These coordinates, um, maybe I I, I, uh, I, would like, I would uh, request Dr. Argita ma'am to explain this more better on a seven standard range. Argita ma'am, can you explain him about the projection? Good evening, all. Uh, projection is done for uh, purpose of uh, map. We need to do, uh, for each purpose, we have different projections. Thousands of projections we have. Yeah. Mercator has made it for travel purpose. Your distance should be correct. Uh, so for travel purpose, uh, Google Maps all use this Mercator projection only so that only you can see you know, the auto coming. When you book your uh, uh, auto, the, it's coming in. A, you can uh, track the sphere way. So that is because of Mercator's projection. It is designed to see the distance is correct. So you have uh, to travel with the correct distance. If the distance is wrong, it goes on the band somewhere. So for correct distance, this Mercator projection is uh, ideal. So Mercator projection is only for travel. For each uh, purpose, we have different. Uh, for area, if you need area to be uh, considered, it's, you have a different projection. Mercator is only for travel purpose. Distance and directions are maintained throughout the map. A so you don't need to see about the shape of the countries in the Mercator map. Okay. Actually, if, uh, sorry, ma'am, sorry. Actually, if you go into the pro, I mean, uh, teaching of projection, that would be a longer process. That is a separate way. You need to really get into it, the coordinate systems and how these coordinate systems evolved and what are all the different projections there are 
as ma'am told there are thousands of projections which were we based on the purpose the projections are made okay for uh, for as ma'am told the distance mercator projection makes the ideal way to uh, uh, i mean uh, study the distance you can use the mercator projection it's again a coordinate system where we are going to have it for locating the place where we want to go okay uh, any more questions by from anybody else Yeah, somebody is playing. Ah, the student has raised his hand. He can ask question. No, he has only. Who is the one who is asking? Padu. Padu. Oh. What's your name anyway? By the time, by the way, seventh standard student. I think. Sir, my can... name is Nile Mayur. Oh, where are you from? Chennai. This Kairam Medu. Okay. Not very clear for me. Um, are... My house is in Nellikupam Street, Amrikal. Yes, sir. I see. So... I'm the doctor, TV Lakshmi Kumar. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Okay, anybody else? Any more doubts? Geography is there at 7th, 8th, 9th uh, level. It seems Rakshat is speaking, I think. Yeah. But he has to unmute and speak. Then only we can hear. So he is actually he kept his video on always. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all right. Fine. Yeah. Uh, any any other question? Okay. So meanwhile, let me tell you a certain more informations. The Google Earth. Maybe some people are familiar. Many of you are familiar in Google Maps. If you want to go somewhere and you just type your location, then the map comes. A similar information with a more scientific and many more layers of information is also available. And uh, Google has made a software called Google Map. Similarly, sorry, Google Earth. There is a Google Moon, Google Mars. So you can go type Google Moon and download the software and see the moon. On the moon also, there are no borders. Uh, different countries have made their own territorial marks, although not legal, but just for scientific investigation. And this Google Earth has a lot of features. In India, uh, for the last 10 years, efforts were made to make a similar software. And I was surprised. This should be, first of all, taught in all the geographical departments. The Indian system equal to Google Earth is known as Bhuvan, B-H-U-V-A-N, developed by ISRO scientists. Must, you, you all may be familiar. So that um, software uses all Indian satellites and it has got certain newer features which are not there in Google Earth. Although Google Earth has got very fine satellite imagery data. So you can see the very sharp images of a very, very small features that your car standing on a street, something like that. But in Bhuvan, we have got an Indian database and a similar software similar with similar features. But it has not been popularized because it is developed by Government of India Enterprise ISRO. So it is not having many commercial features. But uh, Indian universities and geography departments must also familiarize uh, this system and introduce to the students. So, but now anyway, students can also go and visit ISRO site, click Bhuvan. You can also see the maps similar to Google map. So this is one information. And um, anyway, the talk has uh, brought out the very ancient attempts. I was very uh, impressed by seeing that the first map where three parts of the land surrounded completely by sea was visualized. It's a really interesting imagination. So many such informations were there in the talk. Very enjoyable. 
so again let me go to the viewers if you have got any more comments or questions you please ask any more questions from participants uh, so dr geeta there was one more uh, geeta madam yeah r geeta madam my colleague your camera and uh, it will, i do not know yeah it is like two three few layers added in the cartos graph that you have added another layer of information no she is my colleague who is working along with me and i thought she ah, can... is it oh really ah. her name is same yeah r geeta her she is in qmc yeah yes so you know her very well oh i see okay uh, so actually we should welcome um uh, professor geeta also here so two uh, professors of the same name very good so any any more questions from participants if not i think uh, we will have to close the session anyway my request to the students i have is, yeah please please introduce your, yourself and then ask question my name is nilay mayi ah please yes so the uh, tablet the, like the tablet of the map like is it uh, like are the are those tablets very big like so the small ones tablets are small ones maybe on your arm size this is available in the museum uh, i don't know which museum maybe i can uh, acquire and let you know about which museum has got this i just got this picture uh, in the internet to show that the babylonians had made maps on clay tablets for that oh. time but it's still available in a museum but i i am not very sure about which museum has got this okay thank you thank you ma'am ah uh, thank you any any more questions or clarifications from anybody else or comments ah uh, if not uh, i think uh, we should... yeah we would, i would like to thank uh, yes. dr geeta for uh giving us uh, uh insight about how maps are uh, created lot of uh, interesting facts were uh, you know uh, led uh, you know made uh, available thank you so much it was very nice thank you so much uh, so before you go for your vote of thanks i would like to thank uh, breakthrough science society uh, to give me this opportunity Uh, to interact with all of you and uh, thank you once again for giving me this great opportunity to interact with students and uh, people from various uh, institutions like uh, I, i i could see some people from various institutions thank you so much sir yeah thank you thank you uh, madam in fact uh, to the breakthrough audience i should tell that madam was support you and she has organized many discussions in college related to geography earlier and when the solar eclipse the annular solar eclipse was uh, approaching she had already planned a college level uh, open uh, watching of this annular uh, solar eclipse unfortunately that time there were some i think some caa movements or something like that due to which uh, government announced all colleges should be closed and we lost the chance of assembly yeah. Yes, students sir. all students we, in madras university we could only do the pre workshop and the actual workshop we couldn't do yeah yeah, yeah. we could hold some workshops but the yeah. actual event we could not uh, watch yeah. as of yeah. initiative problems yes, so sir. this way uh, in a way directly or indirectly madam has been very supportive to the students activities related to geography and the sciences so i hope she will continue to support us I definitely this, uh, thank you madam once again thank you sir. and the uh, students are very much interested to join courses like uh, geography Please. which is something not the mainstream course people usually choose but a lot of universities are there in india and abroad where the fashionable students choose this particular subject geography and uh, uh, so there are a lot of opportunities also very interesting subject it is not just only technology there is a lot of science behind it 
and the geography of the earth, the, the system, the knowledge, whatever people have learned, now it is required to map Mars, map Saturn, map Jupiter, and so many other planets. Now the horizon of knowledge, geography is expanding. It is not limited to Earth alone. So viewing all those futuristic uh, opportunities, students can also pursue this particular field, or at least they can uh, choose this type of uh, courses as an elective to pursue uh, uh, the, uh, this uh, geography, which is currently not considered uh, a course which will offer you a job or not. But nevertheless, this is a very, very interesting scientific subject. So students can keep their eyes open and keep their options open. And you can always interact with madam and similar uh, professors working in the field of geography, particularly those who are choosing uh, the, the, the civil service, uh, the sure. aspirants who are interested in, to clear civil service, no, they choose this kind of subject. Anyway, so these are all the side information. Uh, I, I will once again thank professor and I will also thank all the participants who have come join, particularly the students. And uh, now let me uh, uh, hand it over to Yogarajan. You can just uh, say thanks and close the session. Uh, really it had a fantastic experience, madam. I should thank you on behalf of our uh, participants and uh, as well as our VSS uh, activists. So uh, this meeting, this, this kind of meeting we are conducting regularly. Uh, you have to come often, madam. Actually, uh, we are trying to uh, build a scientific movement, actually. Uh, we consider scientific uh, approach uh, scientific way of thinking, scientific bent of mind, those things are very essential human qualities. So that should be inculcated in the present given situation, particularly to young students, children. So therefore, we are uh, uh, trying all these things. We are trying to connect uh, some fantastic professors like you from, uh, in fact, across the world, so thank you so, so much Pana, for the uh, fantastic uh, uh, discussion. Thank you. Thank you, participants also. Thank you, Ananda. Thank, thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank you, Madam. So uh, shall I close the meeting? Yes. Yeah. So 